when I described the earned value parameters, plan value, earned value and actual cost in the previous presentations related to earned value management, we explained what they are about, what are they showing to us. And it is very important to consider earned value management in modern project management because it will give us valuable information about the performance of the project. We defined the schedule variance and the cost variance which gives us the possibility to identify how the project is going schedule-wise and cost-wise. There are other parameters and the parameters that we are looking at in this presentation they are about the efficiency. We know efficiency when we are looking at engines. How efficient is the fuel transformed into energy, the speed of the car? Or when we are calculating the efficiency of investments, we express in fact the outcome over the input, output divided by input, and we see how well is the output performing. It's typically a percentage and in earned value management we are going to do the same thing. We will be looking at efficiency parameters and the first efficiency parameter is the schedule efficiency which means how efficient are we completing the deliverables compared to the original schedule compared to the baseline. The second parameter does the same thing but here we are looking at how efficient are we in fact using our money? Are we paying more to do the deliverables or are we paying less? These are parameters we want to know. A last parameter we will describe in this presentation is a combined parameter. The CSI is a combined parameter which combines the SPI and the CPI to give an overall performance of the project. We will be looking in these parameters one by one and we finish this presentation with a simple exercise. Just let us know if you have some information or additional questions, please write them down in the comments and we will get back to you. Or if you have some specifications that you are looking at, we are here to help you. The first parameter in the row is the Schedule Performance Index. This index is defined as the proportion between the earned value and the planned value. Basically, it tells us how efficient are we creating the deliverables. How many deliverables did we create compared to the number of deliverables we expected to create. Of course, in Earned value management, we will express the planned value and the earned value as a cost, a cost at, as estimation. Now, what is important to understand here is how do we interpret these performance parameters? When we have earned value equal to the planned value, it means that we are performing, that we are executing the deliverables at the same rate as we expected during the planning. It's in fact we are following the schedule baseline. This means that the SPI is equal to 1, which means immediately that we are on schedule. We will see later there may be some things that can go wrong and we have to be careful interpreting these parameters, but that's for later. Now just imagine I'm planning, I expected to have finished uh, five deliverables and I finished six. This means basically that I am performing better, so I'm ahead of schedule. And in that case, the schedule performance index, SPI, is larger than one. That's a good sign, but of course going faster can also have some consequences on the budget and on the progress of the project. Remember, when we go faster, it means that we are using the funds, we are needing the money faster, and we may run out of budget, even though we are in a good position, but nevertheless, 
we may be stopped because of budgetary reasons. Well, the last case, it's a normal case, smaller than one. It means that we are creating the deliverables slower than what we expected, which means that the earned value is smaller than the planned value. And we see that the SPI now becomes smaller than one, which is an indication that we are behind schedule. We are creating the deliverables slower than we expected. The second parameter or performance index that we are defining is the cost performance index. Here we are going to see how well are we in fact dealing with money. How well are we producing the deliverables? Remember that each time when we create a deliverable, we earn the value of that deliverable. And the earned value of the deliverable is the cost that we estimated during the planning to create that deliverable. The second thing we're going to look at is how much did we really pay to create that deliverable? And it's very important to understand what's happening here. We want to see how efficient are we spending the money. So it means when I'm spending more, my actual cost would be higher than the value I earn. It would mean that I'm not working in an efficient way. My deliverables cost more than what they should cost. It's the same thing when you do a job, you estimate a job to do uh, in a certain time for uh, let's say 100K and at the end you finish the job and you finish it at 90K. It means you're performing better than you originally estimated. On the other hand, when you would have, let's say, a total cost for that deliverable or that job at 110K, it means you spend 10K more, which is basically not good. Now, it's very important here that we compare the actual cost not with a planned value, but with the work that was actually done. And the work that was actually done or the value of that work is the earned value. We define the cost performance index as the earned value divided by the actual cost. This is a very simple definition like before. The earned value is the work we did and the actual cost is the money we pay to do that work. Now it's clear when the earned value is equal to the actual cost, we will see that we have a CPI equal to one, means we are in fact performing as expected. We are having a CPI equal to one and we are on budget. The second thing we have to look at when EV is more than AC, the earned value is higher than the actual cost, it means that I'm spending less money to create the deliverables. In this case, the CPI is larger than one. I create the earned value, but I pay less. This is a very good situation because I am below budget. I'm spending less money than I expected. The last one is when the actual cost is higher than the earned value. So we take earned value divided by actual cost is smaller than one. So the performance index is smaller than one. It means that we're spending more money to create the deliverables, which is of course a negative element. We are above budget. The CPI therefore gives us the cost position of the project. Remember that when we were looking at the classical interpretation of the cost position of the project, we compare the actual cost with the S-curve. And that's not always correct because we were forgetting how much deliverables we really created. We have to compare the deliverables or the value of the deliverables we created with the cost we paid to do them. So that's a very important element to never forget that a CPI gives us the financial performance and gives us an idea 
what's going to happen in the future. Because with the CPI equal to 1, we may assume, since we are spending the money as planned, that we will end up on budget at the end of the project. When a CPI is smaller than 1, whatever the position of the actual cost relative to the S-curve, we may expect that our project will be completed cheaper. And when a CPI smaller than 1, here we can assume that the end cost, the final cost of the project, will be higher than budgeted. And this is very important to understand because in the previous, in the classical approach, we would interpret an actual cost smaller than the planned value as a positive element, but we see now with the CPI, we can immediately estimate that we probably will be above budget. We will spend more than what we expected. And it's a very important element to understand because we know now that we have a problem with our project and we can do something about it. The last index in earned value management is the cost schedule index, the CSI. The CSI is a special case because here we have a performance parameter which is equal to the product of the SPI and the CPI. Basically, it shows us the cumulative effect or the cumulative efficiency of the project related to cost and schedule. It's an overall parameter to say how good is our project performing. We know that the SPI, as close as possible or more than one, is very positive. The CPI, the same. The closer to one or above is a very good indication. Now the CSI is multiplying those two parameters. Typically we will see that the SPI is smaller than one, the CPI is smaller than one, and multiplying those two parameters when they're smaller than one it gets even a smaller number. So basically we can see what the combined effective, how good is the project performing. And what we have to know about the CSI is that a CSI which is close to 1 means that the project is performing better than a CSI which is far away from 1. A CSI 1 or above would of course be perfect. It doesn't happen so much but it is possible. So basically what we want to know, the overall effect, what's the overall performance of the project which is given by the CSI. And remember, we want to have the CSI as close to 1 as possible. We define the SPI and the CPI. Now we can look at their combined effects when I put them in a matrix. And the matrix is uh, very simple. We have on the horizontal line, we have the SPI, the Schedule Performance Index. On the vertical line, we have the CPI. And we have these different quadrants. I put the quadrant with one here a little bit. I didn't make it larger, but the most important are those four quadrants to see what our project is doing. Now this point here, it's a very interesting point because here the Schedule Performance Index is 1, the Cost Performance Index is 1, and of course the Cost Schedule Index is also equal to 1, which means that we are on budget and on schedule. Now let's have a look at the quadrant here. This is the most optimistic quadrant. Here we see that the CPI is larger than 1 and the SPI is larger than 1 which basically means that we are ahead of schedule and below budget. So we have a very good schedule position and a very good cost position. Let's stay on the level of the CPI. The CPI is larger than 1, the C SPI is smaller than 1, which means I am behind budget, uh, sorry, I'm behind schedule, but I'm performing financially quite okay because my CPI is larger than 1. 
It means I'm spending less money than I plan to create the deliverables. This means that I expect my project to be late, but I don't expect it to be above budget at this moment. It's always a momentarily position that we look at. Now, is that good? Well, we have to see what's happening, what is important for our project. Do we have to be on schedule? Do we, if we are late, do we have problems? Because that can influence basically the CPI later on if we would have fines or something. But basically, we are schedule-wise behind, cost-wise we are okay. So now we can evaluate what is going hap to happen with the project. The other one here, CPI smaller than one, the SPI larger than one. It means I'm ahead of schedule, I'm performing better. Nevertheless, I'm spending more money. Now, what's the reason of that extra spending we have to investigate? We cannot deduct that like this without any other information. Uh, is it good or bad? Well, we have to see what's the effect on our parameters of the project because the cost parameters may be quite important. Perhaps the schedule is not so much. Anyway, we know that we are ahead of schedule. We're going faster, but we're spending more money. So we expect the project to be completed earlier, but at a higher cost. And the last one is I don't want to be there as a project manager because the CPI is smaller than one. I'm spending more money to create the deliverables. The SPI is smaller than one, so I'm behind schedule. I have a very bad cost and schedule position of the project, which basically means that I will be late and I'm expecting a higher performance, uh, let's say a higher final budget of the project. And that's what we are going to calculate later. Where am I going to end up? When will the project finish? and what will be the final cost of the project. And these parameters, the CPI, the SPI, and the CSI, I will use to do those calculations, but that's for the next presentation. Now let's have a look. We have here on the table some example. What do you think the position is? Where would I be? In which quadrant is our project? And you can try to calculate the CPI, the SPI, and the CSI, and put it in the comment. Let's start the discussion and see what you find as a calculation, and later I will comment on your solution. So this was what we wanted to do about the indexes. We use them to show where our project is going, and we will use them later to calculate the end date of the project and the final cost of the project. Thank you and see you later. Bye bye.